but just the concept alone. The concept of the show is as such. If you haven't watched it, I'm going to let you know. They take all these couples, they put them into pods, um, enclosed wall, enclosed cylinders, where they have to speak through the wall to the opposite sex, and through that, they fall in love. Through that, they, in, they um, uh, announce their engagement to each other, they propose to each other, and then they come together, they finally meet, and then after that, they spend a couple of weeks together um, learning each other, learning each other's families and friends, only to finally get to the altar after a month's time or two months' time and decide that they, a month, I think it's a month, and decide that they want to get married. What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy here, Wesley, from AConnectionTV.com and AConnectionTV on YouTube, the two places on the World Wide Web where we actually adopt similar connections despite our differences. And welcome to my YouTube channel. I am going to be reviewing Love is Blind, episodes one through nine. Why? Because I freaking love the show and I think it is awesome. As I always say, I'm trying to get back into the swing of YouTube. YouTube has changed over the years and so have I. But I still watch good cinema, I still watch good TV, and I love my reality shows. Some of them anyways. Hey, what's up? AConnectionTV.com is a new online streaming network of diverse content. You've heard of Netflix and Hulu. Well now there's AConnectionTV.com. Imagine an online streaming network that housed original web shows and movies that you could actually relate to. Adopting similar connections despite our differences. Drama, comedy, Cartoons, romance, a little nudity here and there, action, exclusive interviews, and more are all here on AConnectionTV.com. Connect with the fellow supporters of the network through forums online posted throughout the week. Let your voice be heard. Subscription is only $7.99 a month, and there are uploads every Wednesday. Hey, I mean $7.99, that's less than a drink at the bar. Or a meal at, say, Wendy's. Have you ever watched cable, Netflix, or Hulu? Wondered, where was your story? <laughs> well, I can see me. 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 I can see me. I can see me. I can see me. Well, I can see me on A Connection TV. <laughs> Subscribe today and you won't regret it. And hashtag stay connected. Before I get started, I need y'all to do me a solid and go to AConnectionTV.com, okay? It's my version of a Netflix where we produce, direct, edit, and write for, and I act in some episodic shows, short films, features, cartoons, and things of the sort. So go check that out. Great stuff every week is uploaded to the site. Thank you guys for those that are already subscribed. Now, Netflix has decided to create another insane reality show. We had The Circle, and now we got Love is Blind. And I started watching Love is Blind with Vic, the person that I'm in a relationship with. Yes, we're still in a relationship for those of you that are so curious and want to know. I started watching it with him, and I was intrigued by the concept, bored in the first beginning of the episodes, but I was intrigued nonetheless. The person that kept me really watching the show to see where it was gonna go was Carlton. Because Carlton has this DL storyline, and I was curious to see what the portrayal of his life was going to be like. Also, I was actually aggravated that he was the only DL storyline, but then somebody told me something or said something aloud that made sense and it resonated in my brain. Black people are the only people that I know of or that's been like really, it's like publicized for black people to be hidden so much from their community and from their family and from their culture that they had to establish this DL thing. Now, I'm not saying that the white people don't have to do this. I'm not saying that Hispanic people don't have to do this. I'm not saying that all other members of the races, of the human race, don't have to worry about this and it's just a black thing, but it's so popular from the black people. So hey, why not continue the popularity with Carlton as the DL storyline. I was just hoping that there was gonna be another storyline that was attached to another face, but it wasn't. And suffice it to say, I was really, really glued to the screen to see how Carlton was gonna handle dealing with Diamond, who, by the way, did have a stripper name, and I'm glad she understood that. So the way that this review is going to go, because there's nine episodes that have aired, and I'm not about to make this a 40, 45 minute uh, review, I'm gonna dissect the 
um, relationships that were established right before the weddings. Now, apparently, there were eight couples that were engaged, but I guess Netflix didn't really want to show all eight couples. They weren't interested in them. Don't know really what happened. There was some controversy with a couple breaking up, and then the, one of the ladies went for the other guy. Anyways, we weren't able to see them. And it's fine, because the six people that we have now, five left, are fine. Okay, so much to dissect with all of them, but let's start with couple number one, Carlton and Diamond. There are so many things right away wrong with this. I'm, I'm curious to see how Carlton really thought this was going to work. You are a man that has had past dealings with other men. You're dealing with a black woman. Not all black women are okay with the concept. Some are, because some feel like it just it is what it is now, but there are a lot that aren't. Why in the world would you get engaged to wanting to marry someone, leaving that tidbit of information out when it is information that cripples and stifles every, your every movement that you make? I don't understand, Carlton. I really don't. And the moment where he finally decides to tell Bad Lacefront, a.k.a. Diamond, about his current lie and or situation, he's so uber defensive toward her and not allowing her to convey how she feels about being blindsided that his whole mind and concept is warped of how a relationship should work. I really felt horribly for Diamond. I was on Team Diamond, minus the bad wig how everything ended up was ridiculous. Him cussing her out and him saying that, oh, she doesn't get it, she doesn't understand, and all this, it was a waste. He was a waste. And I just hate that he treated her and spoke to her the way that he did. Now, it could be a situation where, um, you know, we didn't see the whole thing. Maybe what they showed of her poised and, and willing to talk to him was not how she was totally I don't know because editing is great but I just did not like how that all happened but when he said that your wig was has been slipping since I known you I was like yeah it has been and I couldn't understand for the life of me why she allowed herself to be put on screen like that but I was team diamond nonetheless let's talk about Kenny and Kelly can't really say much about them because we don't really know much about them all we do know is what they've told us and they've been engaged now they seem like two peas in the pod. Both families are you are united in the concept of them getting married, but they have not had sex yet. And I understand some marriages, they like, oh, I want to save myself for you. And But yeah, let that be the case if they're virgins. But they're not virgins. They just haven't had sex yet. And I don't know about getting married to someone not knowing if we can physically stay connected. Not my ministry. Not what I salute. But hey, if it works for them, it works for them. And they seem to be like the perfect situation. Out of all the couples, Kenny and Kelly seem to be the absolute perfect. But they just have not had sex yet. They got the family united. The family are basically like twins and quadruplets, you know. They're so the alike. You know, they like the same thing so much in common, they just haven't had sex yet. So if I had to place my gamble on them, I would say that they are going to get married. But who knows? Kelly is having reservations in the next episode that comes on Thursday, so we shall see. Gigi and Damien remind me of myself and Victor because of the way they argue. Victor is Gigi and I am Damien. And it's just very interesting, the dynamic. You know, one's not listening, one's listening, one's trying to get the other person to understand, one's saying I understand, but the other, it's just a lot. In relationships, there's give and take. And whenever you feel like the person that you're in love with, or in lust with, or like, is not understanding you, you need to take a, in second, chill the hell out, and realize that not everyone is going to get what's coming out of your brain, okay? It might take a second for them to understand and register it, but it's not going to be quick for everyone. And if there comes to a moment where you feel like you're beating a dead horse, take a second, chill the hell out, recollect our thoughts, and try again. That's how communication works. But I'm so much like Damien in the sense that if it's leading to an, um, a conversation that's not going anywhere and all you're doing is yelling, then I'm out. I'm de deuces. 
Deuces, I'm gone. Seeing Damien and Gigi, I feel like it's a marriage that's not going to work. Um, Gigi is a loose cannon and Damien is a little bit more reserved. Gigi has a lot of growing up to do with regards to communication and it could be it could be very detrimental to a relationship. It really could. So to jump into that, not knowing them for uh, however long that they've decided not to know each other through this experience and then to go right into marriage, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now looking at this last episode where Gigi says I do, I really believe that Damien is going to say I do too. I think that he's just losing it. I, like he's like crying and like hyperventilating and crap. I think Gigi and Damien both say I do. That will be my, my thing for them. Um, Kelly and Kenny, I think they're gonna say I do too. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I think they're gonna say I do too. Barnett and Amber. Now Barnett is the 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 romantic, not the romantic, the muy guapo out of the collection of gentlemen. So says everybody. Like that that's like the census that everybody thinks he's hot. He had to juggle three women, um, letting Jessica know that he was really into her and that he would marry her, only to tell her, No, I don't want you, I want Amber. He's very indecisive. He doesn't know what he wants. He's only 28 years old. But he has his life to way more together than, way together more so than Miss Amber does, who all she wants is just to be a stay at home wife. And I'm like, okay. They seem to be connected. They seem to be into each other. They seem to be wanting each other. But something's off. And it's not just Jessica trying to insert herself in their relationship. Something is really off to me. And I don't think it's going to be a unanimous I do. I just don't. At first, I thought that the girl that was running away talking about, hey, this is not going to work, was Jessica. But Jessica's dress does not match the edit of the woman that was running away. It matches Amber. So based on that, and based on just the way things were going, I just don't see them having a unanimous I do. I could be wrong, but I just don't see it. Mark and Jessica. Mark and Jessica are not getting married. There's nothing leading me to believe that they should. There's nothing leading me to believe that they will. Mark is very unassuming. He is just so green and young compared to, you know, Jessica who has her career and is established and has gone through things and she has daddy issues and there's commitment issues. There's a lot of issues there. Couple that with this young man that thinks he knows what he wants at the tender age of 24 and he's ready to dive into this relationship after being the second pick from a woman that clearly wanted someone else. I don't understand why he would believe that this marriage would work and I, for the life of me, don't think that it's going to work. I don't think that there's going to be a unanimous I do from the two of them when they get to the altar. But that could just be me. I was really curious and wanting to see Amber go after Jessica because clearly Jessica still wants Barnett. It's clear. She could say all day long, I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't want you. But you told Mark, your fiance, in your drunk stupor that you're still attracted to Barnett or that you still, there was something about Barnett. He got upset, walked away, but blamed it on the alcohol the next morning and forgave you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, Jessica very much wants Barnett. It's clear as day. I don't think that Mark and Jessica are gonna have a unanimous yes. I think Mark is very green, very young, and he is not reading all of the clear red flags that are waving in front of his face. And he's gonna make a huge mistake going to the altar. I could be wrong, but that's the way that I see it. Lauren and Cameron, I love the these two the most. Lauren is, is a beautiful, beautiful girl. Beautiful, beautiful woman. And Cameron is just so freaking nice. I don't even know if it's that possible to be that nice, but he's that nice. And I would like punch Cameron, I mean punch Lauren through the TV on the shoulder if she said no to Cameron. What? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you do that? I think, I think Lauren and Cameron are going to be a unanimous yes. Um, there's just no reason for them not to be. I, I understand 
Lauren so much with not wanting to give up her independence, wanting to keep her apartment and all of that, because marriage leads to divorce in a lot of situations. In the last few years, in a lot of situations, marriage leads to divorce. And of course, Lauren's looking at her parents as a pattern and example. Both of their, both her parents got divorced. Karen's parents did not get divorced. So many things leading me to believe that, you know, these people have all these issues and, and, and because of their experiences. I can't wait for Thursday's episode. I really can't. But there's so much good compacted into this show. You have Nick Lachey and his uh, wife doing it. Um, they don't really add much to the show. Is love truly blind? Yeah, because you could be the finest thing on God's green earth or Gaia's blue earth, whichever you look at. Okay? And as soon as you get on my nerves, I want nothing to do with you. I don't want to have sex with you. I don't want to see you in my presence. Like, don't annoy me. If you annoy me, you can be Tay Diggs. I don't want the butt. Okay? I just don't. Just leave me alone. Okay? And I'm looking at these people, and I can grab myself out of some of these people. I have traits in Damien. I have traits in Jessica. Jessica is a realist. So am I. I have traits in Lauren where I don't want to be giving up my privacy, and I love being alone a lot of the time. Um, I have traits of Cameron, like very mild-mannered and, and very chillaxed, you know? Um, but I see myself in, in, in a couple of these characters that I think actually that's about it. I'm not Kenny. I'm not Kelly. I'm not Amber. I'm not Mark. Um, I'm not Gigi. It's very interesting. I'm not Carlton and I'm not Diamond. Okay. Diamond, that lace front was horrible. Carlton, be honest and truthful at all times. Kenny and Kelly, I wish you all the best. Have great sex. I think they're going to get married. Um, Gigi and Damien, I think they're going to get married. I believe I said that they are. I think they're going to get married. Um, I don't think it's a match made in heaven, but I think they are. Amber and Barnett, I don't think it's going to happen. Mark and Jessica, I don't think it's going to happen. Lauren and Cameron, I think it's going to happen. I'm curious to see what you think. Leave your comments below and let me know if you feel that these people are going to get married. Who do you think is not going to get married and who do you think is going to get married? And by the way, are you even watching Love is Blind? I know I started this review off by just spilling out how I feel about it, but I'm believing so that you already know about Love is Blind because if you don't, then you don't have Netflix. And if you do have Netflix, you should be watching Love is Blind. It's good. It's really good. It's really, really good. But anyways, let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Who do you think is going to make it a unanimous I do? Thank you guys for watching. And as always, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, A Connection TV, and go to aconnectiontv.com and subscribe to that. Doses.